Hey divers, Alec Pierce again, Vintage Divers. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to shake that at you. Uh, I'm going to take just a few minutes today to talk about knives. I'm doing this for several reasons. I have a lot of knives in my collection. Uh, one of the first reasons I'm going to do this is that I'm selling my collection. Bit by bit, a little piece at a time, as people have some interest, and then slowly I am doing that. But before I do that, I want to take a record of it. And I have so many items, so many items. Hundreds of... Uh, of uh, uh, two hose regulators, which I know you have a lot of interest in. I don't know how many single hose regulators. Dozens of boxes full of them. Mass, fins, snorkel. You've seen a lot of it already. And I have several boxes, several good sized boxes filled with knives. I pulled a few of them out today. And these are interesting knives. These are unique knives. Uh, as I've said there, and I think these are um, uh, odd, and odd and deadly. Thank you, Kevin. Odd and deadly. <laughs> they are. Okay, this is a knife that some of you will recognize. All right. This is the famous hard hat knife, commercial diver's knife, U.S. Navy knife, whatever you want to call it. This is a knife that was used not so much by recreational divers like us, but this was a knife that was used by commercial divers, hard hat divers, you know, the big brass hat, blah, 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 walking around, Diver Dan. How many of you remember Diver Dan? <laughs> not too many. But anyway, help me sing the song. Anyway, this was the, uh, the commercial diver's knife. This isn't an, an original. This is an actual commercial diver's knife. Uh, this particular one has never been used. Never been wet that I know of anyway. You can see it's a double-edged, serrated, sharp. It has a uh, sharp point on it. Uh, solid brass, hardwood handle, comes apart for cleaning. And then it has this big solid brass sheath. I can just imagine some guy who had a big piece of brass and uh, they said, okay, make a sheath. What? And this is made by Morse Diving Equipment in Massachusetts. Morse Diving Equipment is quite famous as well. That is, the, in fact, the, the manufacturer of hard hats, the biggest manufacturer of any of hard hats. This is that particular knife, commonly called a shark billy. There's a bit of a misconception that commercial divers would use this, bang the shark on the nose to scare it away. I suppose it might have happened, who knows. Common practice, I doubt it. First of all, it was held on by a leather strap with a belt with a buckle on it, which was impossible to take off with gloves on. So how we got, I don't know. But anyway, let's, let's pretend. And this is dull. This should be shiny, this should be shiny shining brass. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful knife. These knives, Kevin uh, suggested I tell you what these knives are worth. This knife would have sold originally for, originally, and back in the 60s, 50s and 60s, for about $60, $70, approximately. And then uh, the price uh, increased somewhat. I'm going to guess maybe 10, 15 years ago, you could buy one of these for 150 bucks. Maybe not brand new like this one, unused, not brand new, but unused, but a, a good knife like this. Today, $300 at least for a knife like this, maybe more. Once I shine this up, brand spanking new, never used, maybe more than that. For recreational divers, there were all kinds of knives. One of the companies that made the nicest knives, and by nice, I'm a guy, right? I mean big, tough looking knives, was Scuba Pro. Scuba Pro knew how to make a knife. Who was it that said, that's not a knife, this is a knife. I think this is a knife he was holding. And isn't that beautiful? That's a dive knife. That's right. This is a dive knife made by Skiba Pro quite some time ago. It came with a sheath and everything else, but you could walk into your dive store. And you had a choice of six or seven or eight different knives, little ones and medium-sized ones, and this one. <laughs> Guess which one you wanted. Yeah, yeah. But these were expensive. Oh, yeah, these were probably 50 bucks. Yeah. Not like those cheap little 18 or 19 dollar knives. But anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful knife with a simulated bone handle. Bone handles were all the rage, you know, for many, many years among Western fans. Plastic. But it looks really good. Typical big uh, dive knife, though. The finger guard down here, serrations, drop point, and all, the, all everything. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Similar knife made by U.S. divers is their famous uh, Seahawk. They made the Seahawk. Same type of knife. This is a famous knife. Well, well made. It came in a black handle, and it came in an orange handle, it came in every color you could possibly imagine. The Seahawk, and this was sold by U.S. divers for many, many, many years. Beautiful big old knife. All the same features, uh, removable head on it. You could take this off, take it apart, and clean it. This particular model is interesting in that it is part of their 1975 commemorative model. Uh, U.S. divers in 1975 made a set of, uh, of equipment. Mask, full foot fins, strap fins, uh, a knife, 
don't think they made a snorkel. I'm not sure. I don't think so, though. All with the red, white, and blue. Yeah. And, of course, uh, you know, they were somewhat popular because uh, they, were, they were introduced by U.S. divers in the United States. In the United States, that particular color combination was pretty popular. Another knife, <clears throat> kind of unique, very unique, in fact, is this one. Beautiful, heavy brown hand. This knife weighs about, about just three pounds. Solid brass head on it, brass uh, uh, finger guard on there, same typical knife on the front, serrations, drop points, and so on. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Very, very heavy. That was very, very common. Now, this is just the opposite. This is a unique knife as well. It's very light, very light. This is solid aluminum. as a metal blade, but the handle is aluminum. This was uh, made by a European company, and uh, Klingon. No, it doesn't say Klingon. Espadon, there we go, that's better. Espadon, nice, nice little knight, and this is a dagger type, meaning it has a point. Both edges are exactly the same. Now, let's look at a couple of old knives. I got a couple of old knives here that I want to show you. I know they're old, pardon me one second there, Kevin. <clears throat> Keep that camera rolling. I know they're old because here I have a catalog now. I chose this particular catalog, 1960, although these knives appeared in the 1957 catalog, which I have from U.S. divers. I chose this one, uh, Kevin, because they show better in this catalog. And that one, if you, even if you zoom in, it wouldn't show very well. But back then, <clears throat> the knives were knives that were commonly used for other purposes, and they were introduced for scuba diving. So, for instance, if you look right here, you'll see this knife. It shows in here a yellow handle. That's because everything's yellow in here pretty much. A yellow handle, a dagger type point, and a leather sheath. Okay, let me set that down. And there's that knife. 1957, 58, 59. Uh, its big feature was that it floated. Now, I don't know. I guess back then it was a big deal. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd want a floating dive knife. Oh, maybe I would. <laughs> I, I picked up a lot of dive knives off the bottom around shipwrecks all over the world, certainly here in Ontario, but a floating dive knife, I just don't know. I don't know for sure. And a leather sheath. Again, I'm not too sure if a leather sheath is great anymore, but that's what it was. That's what it was back in those days. A uh, floating handle, a little ring on the end for a lanyard, I suppose. Again, that uh, dagger type point. There you go. A very, very popular and very, very old dive knife. At the same time, in the same catalog, was the famous Vulcan knife. Okay? Plastic sheath, leather strap. Its most distinctive feature was, of course, the guard, the hand guard on there. This was a knife called different names, but it was sold by U.S. divers as the Vulcan knife. This was a knife that was used, apparently, but used, was used by, uh, by military forces at the, in the time of the Vietnam War. Quite common back in then. Common, common knife. This was also the knife, by the way, that is sometimes called the Sea Hunt knife, because it was a knife that was used by Mike Nelson. Mike Nelson in Sea Hunt, now 58 to 62, and you can see that Vulcan knife <clears throat> here in the U.S. Divers catalog, right up top here. And uh, these knives were selling for $7.99, uh, $9.99. Oh, there's an expensive one, $5.98. How much was the Vulcan? The Vulcan knife. $7.95, $7.95 for that knife. Today, uh, on an auction, because of its legacy, because of the Sea Hunt legacy and the military legacy, you will, will probably pay $100 for that knife. Another common knife, again a military knife, was the K-Bar. Quite a well-known knife used by a lot of divers around the world because you can pick these up for $5 in a war surplus store. This was a genuine U.S. military, generally U.S. military knife, uh, leather-bound handle, K-Bar, Plastic sheath, strap, and so on. Very, very common. Again, this one has a bit of a legacy. This is another knife that was used by Mike Nelson. So where years ago, I used to go into White's Surplus in Lindsay, my hometown, and you could buy a 303 British rifle at White's for $19.95. Still wrapped in greasy paper. Brand spanking new, never found. He would take it out of the case. 19 bucks. There you go, son. And I'd walk out with it. And you could buy these knives for $2.95. Not anymore. The K-Bar, a knife, because of his military legacy, is worth a lot of money, and his relationship to Mike Nelson makes it worth even more. Now, just so you don't forget where I'm coming from here, yes, a lot of divers made their own knives. They made their own knives. Yeah, we'd get a piece of steel, and depending on how uh, mechanically adept you were, uh, would determine what kind of steel, maybe a piece of spring steel, a piece of carbon steel. In this case, I'm not sure what the heck this is. It's steel of some sort. 
and it looks like it's been shaped out and the, and the fellow is pretty handy. He's got a white plastic uh, handle on there, screwed nuts and bolts on there and set in nicely and shaped, cord on the end. And this is a very thick knife, it's not very sharp. He may very well have planned to use this more as a, there's a sharp edge there, he, play, he may have planned to use this more as a abalone iron, a pry bar, if you like, more than a knife. But there's a homemade knife as well. So we had a lot of fun with knives back in the days when knives were a big part of diving. Today they're not so much. Now they're called dive tools. They're knives, but they're called dive tools. I guess this has some nicer sound to it. This, this is 2017. It is the age of being nice, although you wouldn't know it. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so knives are called dive tools, and they're short and very handy. Now I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that the need for big knives, maybe it was overblown in the old days, and it, maybe today it's smarter, people are smarter to realize they don't need big knives, we use smaller ones. But there's a couple of nice knives for you to think about and remember, reminisce a little bit about old diving. If you're an old commercial diver, you certainly remember this one. And if you have one of those big knives kicking around, get it out, clean it up a little bit. It's probably worth a bit of money too. Hope you enjoyed that, Alec Pierce. Vintage Scuba, now keep your ideas coming. Kevin and I need some more ideas for Vintage Scuba. What kind of old stuff do you want to see? Talk to you soon.